Hey, peace and blessings, family. This is Brother Joab. For those who don't know me, I just wanted to say, first and foremost, all praises to the Most High, through His Son Christ, the Anointed One. Happy Sabbath to the 12 tribes that scattered abroad. And today I wanted to um, touch on the topic of loving your neighbor like you love yourself. Because that, that's what's going on in Israel. It seems that we have, excuse me, sorry. It seems that we have dis, uh, disconnected the love that we have for one another. So I wanted to make a video on, do the scriptures, Lord's will, connecting that love back that we had to each other according to the scriptures and how Christ taught us how to love one another. So I'm going to um, get right into the scriptures. I'm going to go to Matthew 22, and I'm going to start at verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, verse 36, Master, which is the great, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So that, that's, a, that's the thing that we, first and foremost, I want to touch on that topic. That, that's what we fail to understand, that we, today, we have not loved the Most High with all our heart, soul, and mind, and body. We have not loved the Most High like the Scriptures told us to love the Most High. And I'm going to read that in Isaiah and Deuteronomy real quick. Isaiah 29 and 13 says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and their lips do honor me, but have excuse me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So that, that's the thing. We have we have not learned how to love the Most High. We have not learned how to learn love Christ. We have not learned how to love our neighbors. So that's what we have to um, that's what we have to um get together. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That's what we have to learn how to um get together is the love. And that's what we have to start showing is that love and that charity according to the scriptures. So I'm going to read it again. Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore the Lord said, Whereas much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So what Isaiah was prophesying was us as a people, us Israelites, we proclaim to love the Most High God with our mouth and our lips so we can speak it all day. Yeah, we love the Most High. We love His Son. But it says the heart is far from me. So our heart, our mind is not there with the love towards the Most High God. We, um, we claim we do this. We claim we love that. We claim we love the neighbor. But it's just lip service. That's what Isaiah was saying. And Christ quoted the same thing in Mark chapter 7. It's what? We, um, it's all lip service. Our hearts and our mind is not... On the focus of the Most High God, and that's what that's what we um we have to get back to that we have to get back to loving the Most High God. We have to get back into loving our brothers, loving our sisters the correct way. We have to get back into loving Christ and honoring Christ the correct way. So it says, "Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, so we claim to uh, be near to the Most High with our mouth. You understand? And with their lips do honor me, so they say praise the Most High, praise the Son. But what?" The heart is far from me, so our mind is not in it. Our body is physically here, but we're not there spiritually. And that's what we have to get back to. We have to get back to the spirituality of things. Because we have, we have been so far disconnected, discontinued from our heritage, that we don't think of things as spiritual. We all work in the carnal and in the flesh. So we have to get back into the spirit of fasting, praying, and truly loving our brothers, and truly loving our sisters, and heaping that call the fire upon their head and making them um making them uh show excuse me making them see that um we truly care about our brothers and sisters so that's what we have to understand how to do so i'm gonna read that again isaiah 29 and 13 wherefore the lord said for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of man and that's that's what's going on in israel today the fear of the Most High, the fear of Christ, is being taught by the precept of man. We have not, we are not learning of the Most High according to the Scriptures. We are learning the Most High and His Son according to some man's doctrine. So that's what we have to question ourselves with Israel. Where are we learning this stuff from? Who, who are teaching us these things? It said, but taught by the precept of men. So we, we're being taught by the fear of the Most High through man, not through the Scriptures. So I'm going to go back to Matthew 22 and verse 37. Jesus said unto him, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So let's see what let's see where Christ got that from. In the book of um, we're gonna go to the book of Deuteronomy because remember precept upon precept. So Deuteronomy chapter six. This is what Christ quoted that from. In Deuteronomy chapter six, and I'm gonna start at verse four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. So that's, really, that's the first step into real, truly repenting, is are we acknowledging that we love the Father? Are we doing the will of the Father? Are we truly loving our brothers and sisters how the Father taught us how to, according to what the scriptures say, not what man says? So I'm going to read it again, Deuteronomy 6 and 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Verse 6, And these words which I command thee, this day shall be in thy heart. So these words which I command thee when Moses was speaking to the children of Israel, these words which Moses spoke, said they should be in your heart, so they should be in your mind. We should always remember that we are supposed to love the Most High with all our heart, soul, mind, and body, and our might. And that's what we're failing to do. As so-called repentant Israelites, we are not truly loving the Most High. The Father is angry with us right now. He is chastising us and punishing us. He wants us to truly come back to Him the correct way in spirit and truth. But we are not worshiping the Father in spirit and truth. We are worshiping the Father taught by men. And that is an error. So we have to truly come back with humbleness and supplication and fasting and prayer to draw nigh to the Most High, like it says in James chapter 4. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. So I'm going to read it again. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. So this was what Moses was speaking to the children of Israel. We have to understand, us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we have been so disconnected from the Most High. We have been so disconnected from Christ. That we do not understand our heritage and what, it, what is our duty as a people. Our duty is to fear God and keep his commandments. But now he sent his son Christ. Now we have the, the burden, of, the sacrifice of the law lift, lifted off of us. So now we have Christ to help us keep these laws burden free. Yes, we're going to hiccup and slip every now and then. But now we have what? Grace. We have truth. We have, truth. We have mercy. So I'm going to go back to Matthew 22. Matthew 22 and 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. So Christ was saying that this is the first and great commandment. Not saying that we just have to keep, I'm going to explain that later, that not just keeping these two commandments. He said this is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So where did Christ get that from? Let's go to um, the book of Leviticus real quick. Leviticus 19, and I'm going to start at verse 17. Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So this is what Christ was quoting from. He was quoting from the Old Testament because remember he said, I came not to do my will, but the will of my Father. So Christ was telling us, he said, this is the second commandment. He said, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Who was the children of our people? Us, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's what we love to do. We love to have strife. We love to hate each other. We love to kill each other. We love to murder each other. And it has to stop as well. We have to come together as a people and truly learn how to love one another according to what the scriptures say. So it says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord thy God. And, that, and that's the thing that we have to be taught. We have to be taught how to love ourselves because we have been so indoctrinated during slavery and during Jim Crow and during the segregation periods that we have forgotten how to love ourselves. We have forgotten how to love each other. We have forgotten how to love our brothers, love our sisters, love our mothers, love our fathers, love our grandparents, love our cousins, love our, even our own children. We have so, we bear so much hatred for each other that we can't even stand to be around family. It takes pagan holidays for us to come around, but that's not 
how it's supposed to be. So how are we going to fix that? By what? Digging into the scriptures and really sh uh, digging in and reading what the Most High wants us to do. So I'm going to go back to um, Matthews. <clears throat> Matthews 22 and 39. And it says, And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So what? Christ is saying what? On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Meaning what? That we are supposed to love each other. This is what the um the prophets came to spread. They came to spread what? The love. So what? We can have mercy and grace. So that what? They were teaching what? The love of what? The Messiah. That's what we have to come into the realization for. That all these was uh, bringing stepping stones for us to get closer into Christ. And they were showing us by rebuking us in the Old Testament. Showing us our flaws. Showing us what we're doing wrong. That is love. That is correction according to the scripture. So we have to learn truly how to take the correction. Take the love. And not take it as malice. Not take it as hatred. So we have to put off that old flesh. We have to put off that pride. Humble down. And truly search through these scriptures and really think about what are we doing are we doing this for ourselves are we doing it for the most high are we doing it to please man we should be doing it for the most high all glory should go to the father always so i'm gonna read it again it says on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets so i said on these two commandments so love the most high god and love your neighbor like you love yourself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets these what the prophets taught was love Love. Why? Because the Father loved us so much that He did what? He sent His only begotten Son. So that's what we have to understand. That we have to love each other and we have to give the praises to the Most High because He sent His Son to die for us because for our wickedness. So I'm going to go to um, Matthew 5 real quick. Matthew 5 real quick. And I'm going to start at verse... 22 Matthew 5 and 22 but I say unto you that whosoever that's who whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of the hellfire so what um what Christ is saying it says when he says thou fool is talking about calling somebody wicked or ungodly. That's when you look that word up in the Strong's Concordance. It says that when it says thou fool, it says you should be danger of the hellfire. We call somebody wicked or ungodly or pious, saying that they are without God because we don't know. We sitting around judging each other, condemning each other, but we don't know who's going to repent. We don't know who's going to find God. We don't know who's going to find the mercy and truth of the Most High God. So it says you should be. You gonna be danger of the hellfire because you're judging your brother, saying that they're not going to repent. Saying two thirds, Israel's two thirds. You don't know who the two thirds are, so we have to cut off that folly. Cause Christ is warning us, you're gonna be in danger of that hellfire. Verse twenty-three. Therefore, thou shalt bring thy gift to the altar, and thou remembers that thy brother has ought against thee. So that if they remember that thy brother has trespassed or does something against thee, verse twenty-four. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So Christ is saying, if you um come into the altar to give your gift, and you're doing what? And it says, if you have um a trespass or offense against your brother, you don't reconcile against your brother. It says, leave your uh, leave your gift there. Then go to your brother first, reconcile. So Christ is telling you, these are the steps that we need to be taking. We need to be searching these scriptures and finding out what Christ is saying, how to handle things, not how the deacons or elders or um captains or generals or Whatever five star generals are saying, we have to understand, or our pastors, we have to understand how Christ is telling us how to deal with our brother and sister. Because Christ is the way, He is the truth and the light. So if Christ tells you to do something, you have to do it because His commandments is coming straight from the Most High. What the words He spoke is coming straight from the Most High. So Christ says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there, excuse me, there remember is that thou brother has ought against thee. So if you remember that, um, your brother has trespassed. If you have some type of fault towards your brother or against your brother, it says, Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. So we have to learn how to forgive one another. We have to learn how to truly forgive and truly come back to the humbleness of loving one another, Israel. So I'm, I'm going to jump down to verse... Um, 
I'm not saying words in that. 30, um, 38. Ye have heard that it have been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Verse 39. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And I'm going to jump down to verse um, 43. Ye have heard that it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Verse 44. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Verse 46. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if, verse 47. And if ye salute your brother only, what do you more of the others? Do, you, do not even the publicans so? Verse 48. Be therefore perfect, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So that's what we have to understand. We have to truly learn how to speak to one another and forgive one another because we not we can't just be cool with our own brothers that's in our own congregations or whatever we affiliate affiliate ourselves with it says you have to salute all your brothers we have to love all our brothers whether they teach this doctrine whether they teach that doctrine whether they teach in this whether they teach that they are still our brothers under christ even the old testament israelites that don't um they don't accept christ or they, they don't accept yahushai or yahshua of nazareth as the messiah they are still our brothers in Christ, and we have to pray for those brothers that they come into repentance. And if they not, then it's just not their time to wake up. But we have to do this thing the right way so that we can be blameless. You understand? And I'm going to read to I'm going to read an example of loving your enemy like you love yourself, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Because a lot of people think uh, some people get this scripture misconstrued and saying that we're just supposed to take a, a butt whooping and all this other stuff like Martin Luther King turned the other cheek. No, this is not what it's talking about. It's talking about loving your Israelite brother when they become your enemy. So let's go to um First Samuel's real quick. First Samuel's and I'm gonna start at verse I'm gonna go to chapter twenty four and start at verse one. Now this is when David was on the run from Saul. 1 Samuel 24 and 1. And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness in NGD. Verse 2. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks and in the wild goats. Verse 3. And he came to the sheep coat by the way, where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet. So Saul went into the cave to use the restroom, to use the bathroom. That's what it's talking about. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Verse 4. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thy enemy into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him what it shall seem good to thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. So David snuck up on Saul. And did what? And cut off a little piece of his robe. And Saul didn't know that, that David did that. Verse 5. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. Verse 6. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David, it rep David repented in himself that he touched Saul, that he thought, of harming his master because Saul at this time still was king of Israel. He was the Lord's anointed. David was on the run from Saul. David had not been set up king in Hebron yet. So um, he said that he that Saul was the Lord's anointed. And he understood that Saul was of the Lord. And so this is what David did to his enemy because Saul hated David with a perpetual hatred. Because the, um, the kingdom was rent from Saul and given to David. And uh, Saul hated David for the rest of his life. He tried to kill. He even tried to kill his own Jonathan, his own son Jonathan, because that Jonathan stuck up for David. And I'm gonna jump down to verse um, seven. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. Verse 8, David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried unto Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. So David humbled himself. He humbled himself to um, his master Saul. You understand? And it says, 
And he, um, he, he stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. He sold supplication to Saul. Why? Because he knew that Saul was trying to kill him. So what? He was having mercy on Saul because David had an upper hand. He caught Saul slipping. He could have killed him. But then he thought about it. He said, wait a minute. The Most High set this man up for a reason. So I have to love him like I love myself because this still is my brother. Even though he wants to kill me, I have to show him the love and mercy that the Most High showed us. So he, has to, he was using through the spirit. He was showing him love and kindness that the Most High showed us as Israel. You understand? Verse 8, And David said unto Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Verse 10, Behold, this day thine eyes have seen, excuse me, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord hath delivered thee today into my hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but my eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David, even though all the stuff is still going on, David still acknowledged Saul as the Most High's anointed. Even though Saul went off, even though he was trying to kill him and he was breaking commandments, David still respected Saul because he is the Lord's anointed. He was the Lord's anointed at that time because he was the king of Israel at that time. Verse 11, Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and kill thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. Verse 12, The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Verse 13, As saith the proverb of the ancient, Wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Verse 14, After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom does thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? So that's what David was comparing himself to Saul. He was comparing himself to a dead dog, a flea. Why are you chasing such a minor man? Why am I such a threat to you? You are the king of Israel. I'm just your lowly servant, David. Why? Are you, what, what threat am I to you? That's what he was saying. Verse 15. The Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee and see and plead my cause and deliver me out of thy hand. Verse 16, And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Verse 17, And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. So what, what happened with that? David was on a problem. He could have snuck up and killed Saul because Saul was continually after David and he was hunting him. But David said, no, the Most High said, this is my uh, anointed one. So I'm going to have respect for the Most High and I'm going to love this man even though he hates me. Even though he wants to see me dead, I'm going to love him and I'm going to treat him as my brother. I'm going to treat him as my neighbor. I'm going to respect this man and let the Most High be the judge of what be done for that. So that's what we have to get back to the point of realizing that Israel, we have to stop hating one another. We have to really look at each other as your brother in Christ, as your sister in Christ. Even for the ones who are not in Christ, pray for the brothers and sisters who are not in Christ. So we can um, get back to how we were as a nation, as a culture, as a heritage of people, as our true nationality. We have to put off the um, self-built up hatred that we have for each other. Light-skinned versus dark-skinned. What? That's foolishness. That's folly. Where is that even coming from? Like Malcolm X always say, I always quote this all the time, like Malcolm X say, who taught you how to hate yourself? Why are we sitting here having arguments, hating ourselves about light skin and this and dark skin and that? We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are all, us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are all made after the image of the living God. We are made after the similitude of Him. And then we have the nerve to hate each other because of different shades of skin color? No, the Most High chose us as a nation of people after His own image. And now we hating each other. We have hatred for our brothers and sisters. But then we claim to love God. And I'm going to get that in a second. What the Most High says about that. Verse 18. And thou hast shewed this day how that thou hast dealt with me. Dealt well with me. For as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thy hand. Thou killest me not. Verse 19. For if a man find his enemy. Will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good. For thou hast done to me this day. So that, that's a, so Saul recognized that the Most High spared him that day because he could have used David to put him to death. 
but he didn't. But let's see if Saul learned his lesson, which he didn't. So um, let's go. Let's go to um, 1 Samuel 26 because Saul was was speaking good, but then the devil got back into Saul, and David had to check him again. So let's go to um, 1 Samuel 26, and I'm gonna jump down to um, verse seven. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul lay sleeping with the trench, within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Abner was um, the chief, the chief commander of the army. He was Saul's cousin at this time. That's who Abner was. Verse eight. Then said Abishai to David, God has delivered thy enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him. I pray thee. With the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. So Abishai said, let me handle this business. Let me go ahead and put him to death for you. We've been running for so long. Here's his spear. Let me thrust him through with the spear until it sticks him to the ground. Sticks him to the ground. But this is what David said. In verse 9, And David said to Abishai, Destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? So if he, if he put Saul to death, Saul's blood is going to be on his hands. And that's, that's what um, David understood that. He was trying to get his other brothers to understand that too. That this is our brother. This is the Lord's anointed. So why do we have hatred for this man? He may hate us, but we have to show him the Lord's mercy through the spirit of the Most High. Verse 10. David said, furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him. Or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. So um, David prophesied that day because that's what end up, that did end up what happened. To Saul and his sons. He got all his sons put to death for his wickedness. They died in battle against the Philistines. All, uh, Jonathan and all of them. They all got put to death in the battle against the Philistines. Verse 11. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. But I pray thee. Take, now, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster. And the course of water and let us go. Verse 12. So David took the spear and the course of water from Saul's bolster, and they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. Verse 13, Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill far off, a great space being between them. Verse 14, And David cried to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? Verse 15. And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? So what David was saying is because, like I said, that Abner, he was the commander-in-chief of the army of Israel at that time. He was supposed to be there to defend the king at all times. And he was not because, of, like I said, the Most High put a deep sleep upon them. And, uh, and art thou now a valiant man who is like... Who is like to thee in Israel. Wherefore then hast thou not kept the Lord, thy Lord the king? For there come one of the people. And to destroy the king thy Lord. Verse 16. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As the Lord liveth. Ye are worthy to die. Because ye have not kept your master. The Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is. And the course of, and the course of water. That is at his bolster. Verse 17. And Saul knew David's voice and said. Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, my o king. Verse 18. And he said, Wherefore doth thy lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I have done, or what evil is in my hand? So David was asking Saul, he said, What have I done to you, Lord, to um, offend you? Why are you chasing me? What evil have I done against you? What evil have I brought against you, other than being David, your servant? Verse 19, Now therefore I pray thee, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if thou be the children of man, cursed be they before the lord. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Verse 20, Now therefore let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of the lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea. As when one doth hunt a partridge in the mountains. Verse 21. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do thee harm. Because my soul was precious in thy eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. 
Verse 22, And David answered and said, Behold the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. Verse 23, The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I will not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. Verse 24, and behold, as thy life was much set by, uh, excuse me, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes, so let my life be set by the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. Verse 25, then Saul said to David, blessed be thou, my son David, thou hast, thou shalt both do great things, and also shall still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned into his place. Because why? What happened? David again showed Saul mercy. He was loving him like he loved himself. He understood that Saul was the Most High's anointed one, and that he had to show him mercy because that was his brother. Even though Saul had a corrupt mind, and Satan had taken over Saul's mind, David corrected him through the spirit of the Most High and said, Hey, I'm still your brother. I'm still going to show you love. The Most High chose you to be king of Israel. So I'm still going to reverence and respect you. And that's what we, that's in Israel today, we have lost that respect towards our brothers and sisters. We don't see Christ. We don't see um, the Most High's anointed in, these, um, in our brothers and sisters. What we see is blacks. We see coons. We see niggers. We see spicks. We see different types of blacks. We see Jamaicans, Haitians, Bohemians. Caribbean people, we see Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, we don't see Zebulon, we don't see Judah, we don't see Benjamin, we don't see Levi, we don't see Issachar. And that's what we have to get back to the, um, peace my brother, I see you. And that's what we have to um, get back into the realization of that we are the children of the living God. We were given these bywords and slavery, so we have to love each other like the scriptures tell us to love each other. We have to come back. When you see our brothers and sisters, we have to see that, hey, this is Judah. This is Benjamin. This is Levi. This is not um, Haitian. This is not Bohemian. This is not Caribbean. This is not American blacks. We are all from the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's what we have to come back to the realization. We have to start calling us by our original monikers, not by these slave names. Peace, sister. Happy Sabbath. That's what we have to um, truly realize because um, it's been beat into us. Our nationality has been beat out of us and a totally confused and new nationality has been enslaved into us. And now we have to break free of that slave mindset and love each other like the scriptures say. Love us like Christ loved us. Love us like the Most High loved us. Love us with that love that is unbreaking. That, that love and bond. So let's get in um, Romans 12. Romans 12 and 4. It says... For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, verse 5, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member is one of another. So we are all supposed to be one member in Christ. And if we're not, we have to get to that level of all thinking in the same mindset, how Christ and the disciples move. It's not hard. It's in the scriptures how to do it. We just have to read. That's all we have to do. Pick up the Bible and search the scriptures. Get into how... Christ loved his disciples. Get into, read the example that we just read in Samuel, how David loved Saul even though what? Saul meant to kill David and hated him perpetually, but David still showed him mercy and kindness. That's what we have to get. Our, we, we are so stuck on the hate that we can't even learn how to love to fix each other. Our people are broken and we need help. But we have so much hatred that nobody is willing to put in the work to help our brothers and sisters. That's, that's what we have to do. Who is going to put in that work? Who is going to rise up against the evildoers and say, no, enough is enough of this folly. I love my brother. I'm going to defend my brother. I love my sister. I'm going to defend my sister. I'm going to go hard for this truth. Which one of you brothers and sisters is going to rise up and say, no, these are my people. These are God's chosen people and I love them. Who's going to do that? But we still stuck on these foolish doctrines. Excuse me, I'm getting angry. This is righteous anger. We stuck on these foolish doctrines that is distracting us from the truth, which is the mercy of Christ. Which is love. And that's what, we have, that's what we are failing to do as a people. To love each other. That's why the name of the class is love thy neighbor as thyself. But f the first steps to doing that is finding out who you are. Learning how to love yourself. Because we've been taught self-hate for so long. That when we see another person that looks, us, looks like us. That's succeeding. We automatically get jealous. We automatically hate that brother or sister. And we automatically talk smack about that brother or sister. Why? Because that is another dark-skinned, light-skinned brother or sister that's doing good. But Esau has taught us that it's not a good thing for a black man or black woman to be successful. So when we see that, 
we automatically hate each other. And that's what the steps that we have to come back out of. We have to reverse it, fast forward, now get into these scriptures and say what? I'll praise the sister. And get into these scriptures and say what? Love. I love my brother. I love my sister. I'm going to show them the scriptures the correct way so they, they can live. I don't want to see my brother die. I don't want to see the sister die. We have to look at each other like we are actual family, which we are. We are all brothers and sisters of the Most High God. So that's what we have to do. We have to see each other as actual family. And who wants to see their family members die? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Do you want to see your mom die? Do you want to see your dad die? Do you want to see your brother die, your auntie, your cousin, such and such and such and such? No. So what? We have to get into these scriptures and show them love according to the scripture. And we have to show them Christ love according to the scriptures. Not the precepts taught by man, but how Christ spoke and how Christ loved the people. That's what we have to get back to. But we're so discontinued and disconnected that we're not willing to listen to anybody but what? Only certain men that they deem fit. And who is to say that these men is right? They're not coming out of Christ saying what does say of the Lord. Why are you following these men into folly, into foolishness? Let's get back into the scriptures. So that's, um, I'm going to go start it again. Romans 12 and 5. So we being many are one body in Christ. And every one members one another. Verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. So that, that we have so many spiritual gifts in Israel. If we all just come together and just set aside the folly and the foolishness. We can do great things. If we all come back under the, the true veil of the Most High we can do so much stuff. We can shut this stuff down and Christ can come back faster than ever. But what? We're so busy deciding this doctrine is right, this doctrine is right. And then we're so caught up in the mix that Satan has blinded us so much. We are actually truly hating our brothers and sisters according to the word. We are actually hating our brothers and sisters while getting into the scriptures. And that is not how it's supposed to be. So our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, verse 8, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, that he ruleth with diligence, that he showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Verse 9, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. So it says, let love be without dissimulation, let love be without what? Be without fakeness. Be without, um, yeah, fakeness, like I was saying. So let love, don't let love be fake. If you say you love something, then show it. Show it by your deeds. Show it by the actions that you do. Don't just say that you love your brothers and sisters. Show the work. Faith without works is dead. So it says, verse 10, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. So that's what we have to do. We have to learn how to come together. Gather yourself together, O nation not desired. Come together in love. In the love of what? Brotherly love, which is the love of Christ, which is the love of the Most High. We have to put away these foolishness. Put away this self-hate. Put away, oh, because so-and-so is light-skinned and so-and-so is dark-skinned, that they're not Israel. Judge righteous judgment. Don't judge according to the parents. That is right, brother. John 3 and 35. All right. I'll read that in a second. Let me get down reading the scripture. And it says, Be kindly affectionate one to another, brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Verse 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. That's the thing. We don't love each other. We don't want to um, open our arms to one another. And the scriptures say that you are supposed to give to the poor, the ones that are outside the gate. That's, uh, we're supposed to give diligently to the poor, give alms, give charity. And I'm going to touch on that in a second. But we as Israelites, we get so proud and stuck up that we don't give our hands to the poor. And we're going to get judged accordingly because of that. So we have to truly love our brothers and sisters, especially the ones that are homeless and that are sick. They need it more than we do. That's why Christ said, sell what you have and give to the poor. So when people read Matthew 19, they say, um, good master, what, have I, what should I do to inherit eternal life? They say, keep the commandments. And then they stop there. But Christ says, sell what you have and give to the poor. How many can say that they are giving alms and they are trying to help our brothers and sisters that are out in the streets sleeping homeless? That's, that's the charity that we must show to our brothers and sisters. Because Christ said, you will not have me always, but the poor. 
You will have what you always. So we must help our brothers and sisters. Preach them Christ, even though they don't have a home. Help those brothers and sisters out. Give them something. Give them whatever you have to help them sleep through the night. So it says, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to man of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Verse 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Verse 18. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. So that, that's the thing. We don't. We, we always so ready to fight and to protest and do For what? You don't have an army? This National Guard and police will come in here and gun you down quick. So what, what, are you, what are you rising up against? First of all, you're rising up against the authorities that the Most High set up. So with that case, Romans 13, you're going against the Most High himself. And that's why you're going to get shut down. We're not prepared to um, do this physical fight. Because this is not a physical fight. This is a spiritual. This is spiritual. This is spiritual. That's what, we have to, that's what we fail to realize. This is not a carnal fight. Everything that we're doing is spiritual. And we have to put it, what? Worship the Most High in spirit and truth. To get out of this condition. Well, you think overthrowing Esau's government is going to help you get the kingdom? No. Because you're trying to overthrow the Most High government. Remember, the Most High set these kingdoms up. To chastising us because we broke his laws and commandments. So it says, what was I reading that? Verse um, 18, if it be peaceable, as much of life in you, live peaceable with all men. Verse 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. That's Deuteronomy 32 and 35. Wherefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So it says when it says um, heap that fire on his head, you are going to be killing him with kindness. He, you can be blameless. That brother hates you or that sister hates you. You're doing so, nice, so much nice things to that brother, so much nice things for that sister. They can't say nothing against you. They, now they're going to be hating you. Now they're going to be looking crazy because they're angry at you for not a cause, without a cause. So you what? You helping your brother. You, you see your brother that you, dang, that brother um, did me dirty back in 10th grade. He got a flat tire. Go over there and help change his tire. Now st now y'all still got animosity toward each other. You didn't help the brother, and now he still got hatred towards you. For what? You didn't help him to change his tire, and he's still holding on to a, what, 5, 10 year grudge? For what? That's, just, that's a stupid, that's, that's crazy, that's foolishness. That's the mindset that we're in, though. That's the mindset that we have to break out of. According to this, with the scriptures, with the help of Christ, with the help of the Most High, with the help of the Holy Spirit of discipline, we have to break out of this cycle. And it starts with you. It starts with me. Like it says in Psalms 94, who's going to rise up against the evildoers? Which one is going to stand proudly and say, I'm going to defend this word of the Most High? That's what we have to get into. We have to really, really count the cost of what we're doing this for. Because it's not just being an Israelite. There's actually work to be done as being an Israelite. Like I said, our people are sick. And we need it. We need this scriptures more than ever now. Now is the time to come together and help our brothers and sisters. Our people are, are so stuck on the slave slave mentality. All praises, all praises. That we um we in, you in the spirit then, brother. So we, we need to help each other come out of the slave mentality. We have to really have patience with our brothers and sisters. I know it gets frustrating and annoying sometimes, but our brothers and sisters are crying out for help and they have been going through Islam. Christianity and these churches are given are not given the proper solution, but the proper solution is here But you just have to learn how to rightfully divide the word to show our people There is ways out of this bondage and that way is what through the most high through his son Christ who he sent to die for us That's what we have to understand that Christ died for us to redeem us from the curse of this law Galatians 3 and 13 Yes, who? Who is going to defend this truth? Who is going to defend this word of the most high? We have brothers and sisters that claim to go hard for the Most High, but then when you investigate those brothers and sisters, you get around our brothers and sisters, you can, you can see the fruits of their spirit. It's hatred. It's grudge. It's strife. You don't want to be around people like that. that that's negative attitude. You don't want to, be, you want to um, be around positive people. You want to be around people that's humble. You want to be around people that's actually trying to do the work and raise our people up from this dumb state that we're in. Because you, I sit down and watch. I watch people, I see, I see what they post on Facebook, I see how they, I know a couple brothers, 
in real life that I'm around and hang around. I see, I sit down and watch. So I'm like, okay, you talking about this, we talking about that. And if it gets too out of hand, I can correct them with the scriptures. Because the, the hatred and stuff, I don't do that folliness. I used to do that when I first came into the truth. Bang on this brother, bang on that brother. But then I didn't, I sit down and actually started reading the scriptures and stopped studying what man taught me and read for myself. That's not how Christ operated. That's not how the disciples operated. That's not how the Most High wants us to operate. He wants us to love each other. Because that type of spirit is not going to be in the kingdom. You think you're going to get into the kingdom by calling your brothers and sisters coon, nigger? Yeah, I cussed this nigger out. But now he, I hope he repent. What? What scripture is that? Show me the scripture, please, where it says that. No, we have to love our brothers. Show them the love. But like I said, it starts with you then yourself. You have to change. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if anybody be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's what we have to get into, that Christ died for us. And we have to truly understand the love that he gave for us, for that we may live. I preach this in all my videos. Christ died for us. And we have to be grateful to the Most High because he did not have to send Christ to die for us. He could have led us under the laws of Moses to be stoned to two or three witnesses. And half of us wouldn't even be here today. Half of us didn't come into fornications, adulteries, or did some type of crazy sodomy or whatever acts, homosexual acts. But now we have Christ to repent from that. Our sisters being whoremongers, and we can have time to repent from that. Because what? We are on the mercy of Christ now. That's right, brother. Who against, even if it means losing your family, even if it means losing your best friends, you have to stand up for Christ strong. Like Christ, like Christ uh, like the, uh, when Christ was speaking to the apostles, and um, Peter said that, what have we not given up for you? And Christ said that, verily, nobody has given up anything for me. So we have to count the cost of really, are you really truly to separate your, from your family and friends to preach this true gospel? That's what we have to understand. Who is really going to sit down and count the cost and say, I can lose everything by being in this gospel? He, he seeks the zealousness, that's right. So um, from there, I'm going to go uh, to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12. No, sorry, 1 Corinthians 13. All praise, love you too, brother, all praise. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, when you um, read other translations, that charity, it means love. So it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So you just become a background noise. So if you don't if you doing if you speaking with the tongues of angels and you have not not love, Paul is saying you just background noise. You just want 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 want. That's right. Love will be the enemy at the day of judgment. That's all praises, brother. I had to look up that video when I get done. All praises. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So Paul said this because you have all these special spiritual gifts. But if you don't have love, they say you have nothing. So you can have all the faith in the world. You can sit down fast. You can pray. You can be spiritually close to the Most High. But if you don't love your brother, if you don't love your sister, is what? You're doing it for vain. You're doing it for nothing. For not. You're not going to be able to get into the kingdom holding that grudge. You're not going to be able to get into the kingdom striving with your brothers without a cause. Being angry with your brother without a cause. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, Burn, excuse me, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. So you can give to the poor. You can give your um whatever you have. You can sell what you have. You can give your body as a living sacrifice to the most high. But if you don't have that love for your brothers, you're not doing it you're doing it for nothing. Christ Matthew seven. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Lord, have we not prophesied and cast out devils in your name? Christ says, Depart from me. Why? Because you broke that one commandment. You do not have the true love of your brothers. You do not have the true love for your sisters. And that's what we have to get back to, Israel. I'm only just a vessel trying to preach the word of the Most High that we have to get back to loving each other. There's camps out there, there's Israelites out there that's spreading hate, that is teaching us how to hate our brothers and sisters. And that is a disgusting, disgusting thing. And it needs to be stopped. We have to come back to loving each other the true way how the Most High intended us to. But it starts with what? Like I said, it starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with whoever is hearing this true gospel of the Most High. 
All praises, brother. And it says, verse 4, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Verse 5, Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Verse 6, Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. So it says it doesn't rejoice when you see your brothers fall. It doesn't rejoice when you see your brothers and sisters fall into some type of sin. It rejoices in the truth. What? And rejoices what? Rejoices in what? That Christ died for us. That is the true gospel. That the Most High sent His Son to die for us. That is what should we, what should be preaching. Hebrews six, the principles of Christ, the basic principles, baptisms, resurrection, laying of the hand. That that's what that's what we should be teaching, and that is the basic things. Those are the basic principles of Christ. Every camp should be teaching these things: the laying of the hands, the true gospel, repentance, resurrection, baptism. How hard is that? How hard is that, Israel? But no, we want to be in the deep mysteries and so-and-so broke this down real nice. What, what are you getting from that? What are we doing this for? You have to really see, check these brothers and sisters' spirits out. Are they really doing this for the spirit of the Most High? Or are they doing it to become, to get man followers, to become man pleasers? The Most High is not dealing with man pleasers. The Most High is dealing with people that are sincere and wants to follow his word. Because in the kingdom, it's not going to be a kingdom of flesh. It's going to be the kingdom that put away that flesh. It's going to be the people, the, in the, excuse me, it's going to be the, in the kingdom, the people that put, put off those mortal thoughts. That put off that hate, that envy, the lasciviousness, the fornication, the murders, all those impure thoughts. Those are the ones that's going to be in the kingdom. But like I said, it takes time, it takes practice. We have to train ourselves up in those and that is what being embowed with the Holy Spirit of the Most High. So that, that's what we have, we have to pray for the Holy Spirit. We have to pr get baptized so we can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Baptism in this word and baptism in water. That's what we have to that's what we have to get back into Israel, get back into the basic principles of the most high. So it says verse six, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Verse seven, beareth all things, believe of all things, hope of all things, endureth all things. Verse eight, charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Verse 9, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Verse 10, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understand as a child, understood as a child, excuse me. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Verse 12, for now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part that when I shall, even as I also am known, verse 13, and now abide in faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So that's what we have to understand. It says, for now, I, excuse me, verse 13, and now abide in faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So the greatest thing above is charity is love. Paul is just quoting the same thing that Christ quoted in Matthew 22. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. We have to learn how to love. Put off this malice. Put off this hatred that we have one towards one another. Really get into these scriptures and find out what love is. Yeah, of course, love is 1 John 5 and 3. John 14 and 15. Love is keeping the commandments. But it's also loving your brother like you love yourself. You can, try, you can say that you're keeping the commandments all day. Like Paul says, you can um, have all these spiritual gifts. But the fruits is going to show whether you truly love your brother, whether you truly love your sister. But like I said, once again, it all starts with what? Loving yourself. We have to learn how to love ourselves. And what? The way that we do that, if we don't know, is get into these scriptures. Read how we are our greatest people on this earth. But we, but we sin against our God. But he's calling those elect few back. That's going to reteach the people how to love themselves. Because we have been taught... So much self-hatred over the past 400 years has just been regurgitated and, had, and passed down from generation to generation. Now we have lost that love towards the Most High. But we can get it back by what? Humbling down. Bringing in supplications. So I'm going to go to um, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. My little children... 
These things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Verse 2, And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So it says Christ is a propitiation. Christ is our atonement for the sins now. So it says, He is not the uh, disappropriation for our sin, but for the whole world. Meaning what? The Jews and the Gentiles. Meaning who? The Gentile Israelites. Christ died for those too. When you read John chapter, um, I think it's John 10 or John 11. And it says, verse 3, And hereby we do know that, that we know him if we keep his commandments. Verse 4, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So we can say that we know the Most High, and we are keeping his commandments. But if we do not have that love for our brothers and sisters, we are making the Most High a liar. And I'm going to keep reading to show you that. Verse 5, but whoso keepeth his word, and him verily is the love of God perfected. It says, but it says, but whoso keepeth his word, and him verily, truly, for sure, is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. Verse 6, he that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, even as he walks. So if we say that we love the Most High, we love Christ, we are supposed to walk like Christ walked. Christ didn't go around hating his brothers. Christ didn't go around slandering his brothers. Christ didn't go around um, showing discord. Christ didn't go around starting strife and envy. Christ gave his life for a ransom for us. When you read Mark, it says, There is no greater love than a man that lay down his life for his friend. And we have not even got to that point. We, are, we, uh, we rather kill each other than die for each other. And that, that's we have to get back to that love of that we will die for one another. Like Christ died for us. That's the love we need to give back to Israel. And it says, verse 7, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye have heard from the beginning, which is what? Leviticus 19, 17, and 18. And it says, The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Verse 8, Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. So the darkness is gone and the true light shines. The true light is what? It's Christ, because Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. You understand? Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the true light is now shining. Verse 9. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. Verse 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Verse 11, but he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. So we have to learn how to stop hating each other. We have to love each other according to how Christ loved us. We have to put off the malice, put off the hatred, put on the love of Christ. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. But it, like I said, it, it starts with you. It starts from the change from here. We have to see, look at each other and see Christ so that we can truly learn how to love our brothers and sisters. I'm going um, to go down to John, 1 John chapter 3, verse um, 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. So it says, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Meaning what? That you're going to spiritually die. You're going to um, physically die if you don't start to love your brother. You're already in danger of the hellfire. Verse 15, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer have eternal life in him. And it says, verse 16, hereby perceive we... The love of God, because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Verse 17, But whoso have this world's good, and see if his brother have need, and shut up of his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So if you see your brother or sister that needs help, and he shut up your hand, and not help that brother or sister, the love of God is not in you. So that's what we have to get back to the understanding is where we need to love each other truly as we love ourselves. You have to think about it. If you have to put yourself in other people's situation and shoes. How would you feel? How would you want people to help you? You reap what you sow. If you have never helped or given anybody anything and then you become in that situation, 
and then you don't get nothing in return from other people, you reap what you sow. Because you have not the love of your brother, so you're not going to get the love from your brother when you become in a situation like that. So I'm going to go to um, Galatians real quick. Galatians um, 5 and 13. For brethren, ye have been called into liberty, not only use not liberty for occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So we have been called in the liberty. Why? Liberty of what? Of Christ. We are in liberty with Christ. And it says, verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. So we have to learn how to love again. We have to be taught how to love again. We don't know how to do that. And it's a, it's a frightening thing because you have men and women rising up in Israel claiming to be this and claiming to be that. But the fruits of the Spirit is not bearing love. The fruits of the Spirit is not bearing the, um, the love that Christ showed us, that Paul showed us in Galatians. They are there gathering thistles and thorns. They're not gathering the good fruit. They're gathering the rotten fruit. But Christ said, let the, let the wheats grow with the tares. So the, eventually they're going to get weeded out. They're going to get fizzled out. And people are going to show, see them for who they truly are. And that's what, we, that's, what we have to, that's what we fail to realize. That this thing is not physical. This thing is all spiritual. And we all, we all at the end of the day, we all going to have to answer for what we've done. Or what we have done to people. And what we are doing to people. So whether it be good fruits or whether it be bad fruits. Now, now is today is the time to check your spirit. To check yourself. Am I doing good to my neighbor? Am I doing good by my neighbor? Will Christ have done this? Will the disciples have done this? Will the Most High approve of this? These are the questions that we need to be asking ourselves, Israel. These are the questions that we have to seek. These are the questions that's going to help get us eternal life. Am I truly loving my neighbor like I love myself? Am I truly loving my um, brother? Am I truly loving my sister? Am I truly showing them the correct way according to the scriptures? Am I being that light? For my brother. Am I being a life for my sister? That's the, those are the questions that we need to ask. Instead of worrying about deep mysteries and is this book this and this book that. Are we loving each other? Are we having the spirit of charity? Are we having the spirit of the most high? It's okay. It's all good, brother. So that, that's the thing that we have to understand. Uh, that, those are the questions that we have to ask. It's not about... Can I break the scripture down real good? Can I understand this deep mystery? Is no. Are we loving one another the way Christ loved us? Are we loving one another like the way the Most High loved us? Are we truly ready to give up our past lives for our brothers and sisters? Are we truly ready to labor in this truth? Like Christ said, there is not one that buildeth a house and count the cost. Are we counting the cost? Or are we really in this thing for what? Are we in this thing for the long run? Or are we in this thing just to um, be part of a movement, which is not a movement. This is our actual nationality. This is our heritage. Are we just joining it because our friends are joining it? Or are we in this thing to what? Please the Most High. To make it into the kingdom. These are the stuff that you got to be asking. Man. Whoever, if you congregate with brothers and sisters, ask those questions. Do you love me? In the way I love you. Because it's going to show. Either coming out with correction or some other foolishness. It's going to show whether your brothers and sisters truly have love for you or you are just another body to fill up a spot. Eventually it's going to come out. The truth is going to, the truth always comes out. So I'm going to read the last scripture I'm going to read in Sirach, the book of Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha. And for those who don't know what the Apocrypha is, these are the missing books that was removed from the Bible in the um, 1700s by the Protestant church. I'm going to read something real quick. Apocrypha, authorized King James Version. I'm going to read the, the front real quick. It says, The Apocrypha, translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations, diligently compared and revised by His Majesty's special command, appointed to be read in churches. So why aren't these things read in churches? But anyway, that's a different topic. So I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes, the book of Sirach and the Apocrypha. And I'm going to start at verse 1. He that revenges shall find vengeance from the Lord, and he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Verse two: Forgive thy neighbor thy hurt that he have done that he have done unto thee. So shall thou sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. 
So we have to learn how to truly forgive one another. Stop holding malice. Stop holding grudges against one another. Because that is not going to get us into the kingdom. That is delaying our time for the kingdom. and can actually get, put, get us put to death. Holding those grudges. So we can die in our sin. And we have, if we have not forgiven our brothers and sisters. And if you die in that sin. On, this, on the resurrection. You're going to get woken up to the second death. Because you held that grudge. Excuse me. Because you held that hatred. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. Verse 3. One man bear of hatred against another. And does, he, and does he seek pardon from the Lord? So that is a question. It says. One man bear of hatred against another. And does he seek pardon? Excuse me. And do if he seek pardon from the Lord? So you bear hatred against your brother. But then you turn around and you ask the Most High to forgive you. That, doesn't, that don't make sense. I, I hate my brother for this. But then what? I'm asking the Most High to forgive me for my sins. What? Verse 4. He sheweth no mercy to a man which is like himself. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? So now you, you, your brother's coming out who looks just like you who's made in the image of the living God. Asking you for mercy. But then you're like, nah. But then you turn around and say, Most High, please forgive me. Have mercy upon me. Because I'm an Israelite. I'm your chosen seed. But then you're bearing hatred. What? Verse 5, if he that is but flesh nourishes hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? So that's the question. It says, who's going to treat the pardon of your sins? Who? It's not going to be the most high because you're bearing hatred. You're breaking Leviticus 19 and 17 and 18. You're not having the spirit of Christ in you. You don't have the spirit of the Holy Ghost. You don't have the spirit of the Father in you. You have the spirit of the, of the, of the, of the, of the Father, the devil. Like Christ said, you are of your father, the devil. If you are Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. Remember thy end and let enmity cease. So let hatred cease. Remember corruption and death and abide in the commandments. Verse 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and weak at ignorance. Abstain from strife and thou shalt diminish thy sins. For a furious man will kindle strife. So that, that's the thing that we have to learn how to do, Israel. We have to learn how to put away this malice. Put away this strife. Put away this hatred. Put away this, this hatred that we have for each other. Because this is a hatred that is, is just getting out of control. And we have to check this spirit. Because Satan has come around to who he may devour. Whether it be you, whether it be me, he's checking. This. He came for Peter. Um, Christ said, I pray for you because Satan has desired to sift you. Sift you through the wheat. So we have to constantly pray for each other. Pray for our brothers and sisters. I'm going to go to Ephesians 4 real quick and I'm going to leave it at this. Ephesians 4 and 22. That ye put out the, comp the concerning the, comp the former conversation, the old man. Excuse me, read that again. Ephesians 4 and 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Verse 25, wherefore put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another. Verse 26, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon thy wrath. Verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. So the scriptures say you can be angry. You have righteous anger. But you're not supposed to sin while you're in that anger. And that's what we're all guilty of. And we have the chance to repent from that. From that, um, that anger that we have so grown accustomed to. So I'm going to jump down to verse um, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. So that by us teaching, we are supposed to teach love to our brothers and sisters. We are supposed to teach patience, mercy, that Christ died for them. These are the things that we're supposed to be teaching. Not corruption. Not hatred. The things that we're supposed to be teaching is love one another. If your brother sinned against you, apply Matthew 18 and keep it moving. And if he doesn't hear you, keep on applying the same steps so you can gain that brother. But you have to do it in sincerity in Christ. You can't do it with malice in your heart. You can't do it holding grudges. You can't do it having strife. We have to really get this thing together, Israel. Because there's people that are really looking up to us. 
We have to be that light to the nation. We have to be that light, that ensign to the nations. The ones who are lost, they are really seeking this truth. And right now, we're setting bad examples for newcomers that's coming into the truth. Because we're spreading hate. We're spreading malice. And we're not doing things the correct way. We have to really get into these scriptures and see how the prophets, see how Christ, see how the disciples dealt with one another. Yes, you, you are allowed to get angry. But don't go, don't turn it into, don't let it fester into hate. Don't let it fester into murder. Because if you, even you think about hating your brother, you are a murderer in your heart. You, the, the love of the Father is not in you. So that's what we have to come to the realization that the Most High wants us to love one another and stop with the hatred. Have mercy upon each other. Because we are all worthy of death. I'm going to read that real quick in Sirach. And this will be the last scripture. In Sirach um, 8 and 5. It says, Reproach not a man that turneth away from sin. But remember that we are all worthy of punishment. So remember that the Most High can put us to death at any time. And, that's, and with that Israel. I pray that um, this class was edifying. And through the Most High and through His Son, that we all really just learn how to love and, and stop with the bitterness, stop with the bickering, stop with the um, silly striving, and just preach the correct doctrine, the Apostles' doctrine, according to Matthew 28, Acts 2. And we get this thing right, and through the Spirit of the Most High, through His Son, and the, the Spirit of the Holy um, Ghost, we can do this thing the correct way so we can get that crown of life. Stay encouraged and stay blessed. Peace be upon you all.